When it comes to Lions fans, we are no strangers when it comes to adversity from the NFL refs. But my God, it seemed as if last night the NFL refs that were assigned to that game were trying everything they could to make sure the Seahawks won. We're going to talk about it, so stay tuned. What are we? What makes us what we are and what we're going to be? It's grit. It's what we started with last year, guys. It doesn't matter if you have one ass cheek and three toes, I will beat your ass. You can definitely compete with, with, with the big dogs. Ten, five, end zone, touchdown Detroit Lions. You guys, you guys are unbelievable, man. I, I'm telling you. We are driven by Detroit. Hello, Detroit Lions fans. Welcome on back to yet another episode of MCM Motor City Mania. I'm your host, David T. Pike, and as always, we're diving on in. My friends, I'm going to tell you this right now. I've been a Lions fan virtually my whole life. Again, I've said this before, and the story remains the same. It will not change. I started being a Lions fan when I played my dad's, you know, bad 1999 game on the PS1, and I went and played the best player in the game. That was Barry Sanders, and since then... My Lions fandom got started, has never wavered. And if there's one thing us Lions fans know, other than, obviously, the long years of suffering because the you know franchise didn't do well, there's been one other constant. Us constantly getting screwed over by the refs. I'm telling you this right now. I don't care what any other franchise wants to say. No team in the NFL has gotten screwed over more with their pants on than the Detroit Lions. Seriously, I don't care what anybody else says. The Lions have been by far the most ridiculously, you know, freaking unfairly called when it comes to penalties or not getting penalties called in the entirety of the NFL. And I want to say this right now. While I understand, and I know that, and I've come to, at some degree, accept that that's going to happen... Last night, literally, kind of in a sense, shocked me a little bit. I have seen, obviously, what you'd like to call refs, you know, showing favoritism. But last night was a whole different animal. First and foremost, those refs were in our home stadium. But the fact of the matter was, is that there were calls being made that, first and foremost, were not good. And then there were other calls that were not being made that should have been made. Let me explain and let's take a walk down what happened in that game. First and foremost, if we go back to that game, the Lions had 12 penalties for 101 yards. Now, I know a lot of people are going to want to talk about the defensive pass interferences on Terry and Arnold and Carlton Davis. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in a different episode. I'm going to talk a little bit about it here. But I'm going to tell you this right now. Some of those calls definitely were fair and they were good calls. But let me put it to you this way. There were some calls that were being made, especially in the instances of those two, that there was without a doubt no evidence that those calls should have been made. Because first and foremost, what I'm going to say is I have to wonder, seriously, why the hell Carlton Davis did not fully go off on the refs. Oh, sure, he tried. He definitely got damn close to doing it. And, you know, obviously it took, you know, Jack Campbell and Kirby Joseph keeping him away from the ref. But it's like, dude, I would have lost my cool. Because I'm telling you this right now. I understand that the NFL obviously wants to make sure that NFL offenses have the potential to score a lot of points, explosive plays, because that's what sells. It's entertaining. It's also got a lot of explosive market value. So that's what they want. But I'm telling you this right now. I'm getting to a point now where it's like, dude, even though I'm an offensive-minded individual as far as understanding the game, it's getting ridiculous how damn ticky-tacky these ridiculous calls are getting. Because, perfect example, the one time that that particular penalty was called against Carlton Davis, that there was clearly no evidence, where others there might have been a slim piece of evidence or obvious blatant evidence, but one time where there was absolutely no evidence 
was the time when the car the sorry not the Cardinals <laughs> the Seahawks went for it on the two point conversion and freaking Metcalf was ruled out of bounds and they called pass interference on him. You go back and you watch that replay. Freaking Carlton Davis didn't even have his hands on him. His hands were not even on him when the ball got to freaking Metcalf. Last time I recall the, you know, rule of defensive pass interference, it literally states that the defender has to do something to impede the receiver's ability to catch the pass. There was literally no impediment. None. Carl Davis was nowhere close to being able to impede Metcalf's ability to catch the ball. So how the hell can you give that as a DPI and once again, giving the freaking Seahawks another chance to score said points? Now, obviously, they didn't, but that's besides the point. You need to call the game correctly. I mean, for crying out loud, these NFL refs, they get paid quite a lot of damn money for just, you know, one game. And those that get primetime billings, they get paid more. So it's like, listen, if you're going to be in a primetime slot, a primetime billing as a ref, you better call crap the right way. Just calling it for what it is. And again, I understand that you're not going to get every call correctly. Hence the reason why there's instant replay. But, dude, at what point when you get to this conversation... Are you going to continue to call silly plays that completely are diluting the freaking sport? Like, at what point does that become too much? Because over the last, I'd say, 48 hours, I have seen two defensive backs that have literally expressed severe frustration. Obviously, one of them is our own Carlton Davis. Super Bowl winning cornerback, knows how to play the sport, knows how to play the position. The other is Minka Fitzpatrick. Hell, there was an interview where Minka Fitzpatrick literally said these words. He's like, I thought I was playing football, but now I'm not playing the same sport that I played when I was growing up. He literally said that. And it's like, dude, us fans realize that. When I played football in high school, I I said this before, I'll say it again. I remember watching those highlight films of freaking those hard football hits from guys like John Lynch, Ray Lewis, Ed Reed, and it's like, dude, that was football. Physical, hard, you are going to get hit. It's part of the sport. You better make your peace with it or you better not play. That's now gone for the most part. You're not going to see guys like that or Mike Allstott or Corey Schlesinger that are out there literally being battering rams. You're not going to see it. So you've lost that physical aspect of the game. But now as the case with Carlton Davis, now we're getting to a point where it's like, listen, these cornerbacks can't even cover the wide receivers without even getting a flag thrown their way. The fact that Carlton Davis literally had to go up to the ref and literally explain himself to him and be like, listen, what am I doing wrong? That is concerning. Carlton Davis is not a first-time player. He's not a rookie. He's not green behind the collar. He understands what the hell he needs to do. And when the ref is clearly throwing as many flags as he is, and it's ver- it's quite literally frustrating the ever-living hell out of him to the point where he wants to blow up on a ref, you now realize you've got a problem. And I, like I said in my live stream last night, I understand that certain referee crews are going to call things differently. Some referee crews are more conservative when it comes to the rules and they will, you know, not throw flags. And others are more liberal and they will just throw a flag anytime they literally damn well feel like it. Last night we saw one of those crews because they literally were throwing dirty laundry everywhere on the field. It seemed like we couldn't go a couple of plays without there being some sort of flag. And I'm just like, dude, I understand you need to, you know, call flags, obviously when it's merited and when it's definitely obvious. But at some point it's like, dude, let the guys play the damn sport. Let the players play. That's the whole purpose of the sport. Obviously, yes, as referees, you want to make sure players are playing fair. But when you start doing what you did last night, you're becoming more of a detriment to the game than you are a help. Because the whole point of the game is to have players play each other. But when you start calling that many penalties, you are going to, and I said this again during the live stream, you are going to cause players to have to change how they play. And at that point, now you're hampering the game. 
Because if the player not any, is not really doing anything wrong, but you're still throwing flags, now you're causing a problem. And that's what happened last night for Carlton Davis. That's why he got so frustrated. And I can't, again, I can't fault him for the frustration because it was like, dude, there's no explanation. And a lot of them are really, really ticky tacky. It's like, dude, it could go one way or the other, but it's like, just let the guys play. But again, we're talking about the refs almost trying to screw the Lions over again out of a victory. Because again, when you talk about the severe amount of penalties that the Lions got last night, it was not only excessive, but like I said, ridiculous. Now, I know some Seahawks fan is going to try and tell me, well, we got a lot of penalties too. Okay, you guys got penalized nine times for 70 yards. Okay, that is a pretty decent amount here. But let's call it for what it is. I would say at least two of the three times that you guys were able to get down into the red zone and actually score, you guys were aided and abetted by the fact that the refs kept giving you guys chance after chance after chance. And you guys should not have gotten those points because the refs kept giving you those freaking opportunities. Now, I understand people are going to say, well, you guys need just need to play better. You need to play without, you know, being, you know, whatever, breaking the rules. But it's like, dude, like I said, there were times where it was so damn ticky-tacky. It's like, dude, you literally are telling the players they can't play. You're pretty much telling the cornerbacks, well, I just have to let the wide receiver run around free because I can't cover him. At that point, then, what the hell's the purpose of him being out there? Might as well just let the freaking, you know, wide receivers go out and run like they do on 7-on-7. But if that were not bad enough, what truly upset me, what truly got me livid, and again, if you watched my live stream last night, you know I got livid at this was the calls that were not made. And the one call that absolutely made me lose my cool was when Jared Goff got sacked and he literally got sacked down by the horse collar. Dude, that to me is such literal hypocrisy. It is such a damn double standard. Let me explain something here. You go back to that play. What did the ref say? He specifically said that the reason why a horse collar was not called was because the quarterback was in the pocket. Okay, let me, let me try and see if I understand this. A horse collar tackle, it is illegal everywhere else for everyone else that is on the field. But it is not illegal for the most overprotected player on the freaking, you know, football field in probably the most protected position he can be in, in the pocket. So you're trying to tell me that if a player does a horse collar anywhere else, instant flag, it's a, it's a you know personal foul, you're getting 15 yards. But if the quarterback has it done while he's in the pocket, that's not illegal. How the hell does that make any sense? Freaking quarterbacks have rules on rules to where you can't even hit them in the head with a freaking hand. But yeah, you can somehow horse collar the damn quarterback in the pocket, and that's not illegal. Uh, I just got to say this. NFL, somehow make that make sense, because that literally makes no sense at all. That is complete back-ass words. Because I'm going to tell you this right now, and I said this last night. For those that didn't watch and for those that did watch, I'm telling you this. If that had happened to Patrick Mahomes, there would have been a bloody outcry murder throughout the entirety of the NFL. Because that would have been considered, you know, a dirty play. Because, oh, Patrick Mahomes is the golden boy. He's the poster child of the NFL. We can't have the NFL losing its meal ticket. That would have been what would happen in that circumstance. But with Jared Goff, nobody bats an eyelash. Even though Jared Goff is a top 10 quarterback, he has helped resurrect the Detroit Lions into a Super Bowl contender. But yet again... That's the hypocrisy. That's the double standard. It not only extends to how it's not called, but how certain refs will call certain things for certain players. Yeah, it used to be called the Brady effect. Now it's called the Mahomes effect. And again, to kind of wrap this whole episode up, 
it was quite plainly obvious. I don't care what anyone wants to say. The refs were trying to screw the Lions out of a victory last night. They literally gave the Seahawks every opportunity possible to win that game, even though they had not earned it, they had not deserved it. And like I said, us Lions fans, we've gotten used to this kind of crap. Because let's just go down memory lane here for a minute. Like I said, us Lions fans, we have seen our team screwed over more times than anybody else. And there's certainly proof in this. How about the fact that we go just back to the game itself? Um, who remembers the freaking fact that we hit the two-minute warning and, oh, Jared Goff supposedly got out of the end zone, and you can clearly see on the replay the ball gets out. It hits the ground before the tip touches the white line. But here's what bothers me. We hit the freaking two-minute warning, and that's in essence kind of like a timeout. Well, tell me this. How is it that in the NFL, if you call a timeout, you can't go back and review a play or change a play with a timeout, but yet somehow you can do it with a two-minute warning, which is in essence the exact same damn thing? Because think about it. Before they went to commercial break, they said that Jared Goff made it out of the end zone, and that was the end of it. But somehow when we come back from commercial break, they say it's a safety. Again, that is against the rules. You cannot do that. You can't go back to a previous play after a timeout and reverse the call. That is illegal. So again, that was literally a freaking, you know, actual successful attempt by the refs to give the Seattle Seahawks points they had not earned. That's number one. Then let's take a look at some other plays. How about the hands to the face game against the Green Bay Packers a couple of years ago when freaking Trey Flowers got called twice for hands to the face and the hands never got to the face. At best, they got to the throat, but not the face. Then, <laughs> obviously we know we're getting ready to play Dallas in two weeks. How about the freaking, you know, oh, ineligible man downfield freaking bullcrap call. That was literally the NFL screwing us out of a victory, robbing us of a victory. And the NFL pretty much admitted that because, oh, that's right, Brad Allen was removed from officiating the freaking playoff crews. Then you go freaking to the, I even hate to think about this, but go back to the freaking Rams game we just played at the beginning of the year. Even though we won that game, where the hell was the DPI that should have been called on Jamison Williams that resulted in that interception that Goff threw? Quite plainly, easily, defensive pass interference. Not called. That was bull crap. And then you go back to the freaking playoff game in 2014. Again, against Dallas. Oh, that's right. The freaking flag that was thrown and then picked up, that cost us that game, along with a bunch of other nonsense. How about we go back to the 2012 Thanksgiving game against the Texans, where Jim Swartz challenged a play that was clearly, obviously wrong because, oh, that's right, um, the player was down, Freaking Justin Forsett was down. It was clearly evident he was down. But, oh, that's right. We got penalized. The play was deemed not reviewable. And that helped us lose that game. Completely bull crap. Or, let's go back again to the freaking, oh, that's right. How about we go back to the 2015 Monday Night Football game against the Seattle Seahawks with the whole batted ball out of the back of the end zone that the Lions should have had a chance to have a play from right inside the five-yard line, but somehow that play was not called and the Lions wound up losing that game to start the year 0-4. I've literally provided seven, eight, some odd examples about how the refs have screwed the Lions out of a lot of games and damn near come close to screwing us out of games or tried to screw us out of games. That's why I'm saying, last night, the NFL didn't even try to hide it. The refs didn't even try to hide it. It was so painfully obvious, it's like, dude, what else are these refs going to call? Because now they're just getting ridiculous with it. Now they're getting silly. There were calls that were just like, dude, I don't know what the hell you're seeing, but it ain't there. Or it is so minuscule that you are literally being... Again, super sensitive in your interpretation of the rule. But anyway, folks, I've said my piece, and you know what? I know a lot of Lions fans are going to agree with me, and I know there's probably going to be Seahawks fans that don't agree with me. Doesn't matter. The evidence is out there. It's, in the, it's literally out there. I have provided the proof, and there's way more of it. But 
Having said that, I'm going to end this episode and say thank you all for watching in another episode of MCM Motor City Mania. If you like what you saw, by all means, I highly encourage you all to watch the next episode. Also, encourage you all to do one of these three things. Like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. If by chance you subscribed in the past, you forgot to do so at the time, want to highly encourage you all, please make sure you subscribe, but also make sure you hit that bell notification icon so that way you guys never miss any more content that I push out. Again, the more we get that bell notification icon turned on, the more you guys will be able to know when I push something out so you don't miss it. Also want to encourage you all to share this content with your Lions friends and family members. Share it here on YouTube, share it on Twitter, share it on Facebook, share it anywhere and everywhere you can with everybody and anybody that you can. The more we can share it, the greater the channel grows, the greater the channel spreads, and the more we're able to bring in new viewership. And with that being said, whether you've been a long-time viewer, whether you've been a you know, new viewer, I hope you all enjoyed the content. And I also hope you guys got something in your life that makes you happy, makes you smile. God bless, my friends. And until the next time we meet, I'll see you all in the next episode.